Welcome everybody, in this video we are going to cover the state design pattern. The pattern itself allows an object to alter its behavior or change its behavior depending on what state it is in. So every time it changes its state, it changes its behavior. Kinda like a human when it gets emotional or drunk or drinks coffee or is tired. Being drunk, tired or caffeinated are the states that you can be in and the things that you are gonna do while in those states are going to be different. Let's say we want to perform the same operation of communication or talking to a person that is in those three different states. Talking to a drunk person, unless you're drunk yourself, you're probably not gonna understand anything and the communication is gonna be so long, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get anything useful out of the person, right? If it's caffeinated, if the person is you know, drinking coffee and is energized, it might be very sharp, snappy, it might talk a little bit too much. And if the person is tired, it's probably, you're going to get a short response and probably a slight complaint that, oh man, I'm tired today. And the important part of this is that the person himself is choosing to alter his state based on his actions. So if we drink alcohol, we alter our states to be drunk. If we drink coffee, we alter our state to be energized. And if we work a lot, we alter our state to be tired. Remember, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section. Let's take a look at this simple example, the simplest possible. We all have a computer. I mean, you're probably watching this on a computer, and if you're watching this on a phone, it's still a computer, right? The computer can be on, off, on standby, sleeping, you know, it can be in different states, never mind the applications and the possible states that the applications can be in and all the little components that are making the application work, those components can be in certain states as well. We're going to discard all of that and we're going to just take a look at the computer. The computer can be on, off or on standby. This is going to be the example that I'm going to provide you here. We have a computer. I did add a partial class just to make sure we are going to separate the state and the changing of that state. So the computer starts with the state of being off. The computer then is able to change its state. And then we have some sort of an action on the computer, like pressing the power button. Here I define a simple interface for the state. This interface represents the common operation that you're going to try to perform in those states. So if we are off, on or on standby, pressing the power button is going to do different things. Please note that the state and generally the methods that are going to be implemented by different states are going to mimic the methods available on the actual object that you're going to be altering the states off. Please understand that this object is altering its own state based on the actions that are going to be taken against it or the actions that it is going to take. So we have the state that is again your common functionality. We can then implement that state in many ways. We can be off, we can be on, or we can be on standby. Every time we perform an action in any of those states, so if we press the power button when we're off, or when we press the power button when we're on, at the end we're going to alter our state. So if we're off, we press the power button, we set the state to be on. And then if we're on, I have a little flag for if we're charging. If we press the button when we're charging, we will go on standby. That means the computer sort of like hibernates or at least turns the screen off and is ready there to just boot up and go because it is charging. It's not wasting energy. I mean, I'd be pretty sure you know how, how a computer works. Um, and then we have otherwise, if we're not charging, just, just turn the computer off, right? You can also have a, a long press power button where the computer is just going to force turn off. Uh, like, so the perform work will vary between uh, actually changing the state. And then of course, if you're on standby, if you power, press the power button, the computer turns back on. Uh, but the work that you're going to do is going, going to be different, right? So if you're powering up from standby, you might take some state that was saved from a disk and load it up back into RAM. I don't know if RAM loses all power when it's on standby, probably not. If uh, the memory is already on RAM, you don't need to sort of drag it around. 
if we're in the off state, we'll probably need to load the operating system for the, for the bootloader or whatever, right? Whatever whatever happens at that stage. And I'm not that low level programmer, and low level not as in skill, like uh, as in uh, close to the hardware and the operating system. Coming to the mess, what are we trying to avoid? Let's say we have a computer, we don't have these different classes, and hopefully you can understand that I'm only implementing one operation in three different states. This pattern should be applied when you have many different operations in many different states, and uh, this is how it may look like. You can apply you can apply other design patterns as well, but hopefully you understand the semantical meaning. Something changes its state, and when it changes its state, it changes its behavior. We can turn this into sort of a centralized mediator, and then issue commands that are going to perform these operations and override some centralized state. It is possible to do that and in the end the choice is always going to be yours but here's what it may look like if you're not trying to abstract your code a little bit more or you're not applying design patterns right you have the one power button method you have the first state the second state and then the third state and you are going to have this tree of if statements and pretty much you're going to have a long method okay if you're not going to have a long method you're going to have all right if state is off, trigger off power button, trigger on power button, trigger standby power button, and then you're going to have methods, a bunch of private methods, and then you're like, oh man, how do I test my private uh, functions? And then you obviously end up with one massive test file for this one massive class with the one massive function that is split up into many private functions. Having the individual states that are private in this case, can make them public, you can take them outside of the computer, and you can have test cases against each individual state that the computer can be in. Uh, now, uh, a little bit more of a real use case that you can implement this in. Let's say we are making a drawing application where we have a brush and we can drag a brush over a canvas. We can then start clicking. So when once we click and we hold the click, we are going to be painting. And obviously we can vary tools to change what we're uh, painting. However, let's take a look at this. Again, this is a very simple example, but hopefully it should sort of drag you into this world of uh, thinking about how you would implement something like a drawing application, right? So we have a pen with a bunch of methods. So on click, on click, finish, on move. So these are events that can happen when you are either pressing down your mouse or you're moving the mouse about. So when you're moving, you're gonna get updated coordinates or you're gonna do some specific thing. As I said before, the methods that are available on your pen are going to be mimicked in your state. This is sort of the public interface. This is the internal interface of the pen that is going to vary its behavior. However, still allowing the same operations. So let's say we're idle, right? So we're just holding the pen. We're not doing anything. The cursor is just somewhere on the canvas. If we click, we set the state to be writing, okay? So when we're writing, we drag the pen down and the line starts appearing. So we're actually changing the color of the pixels on the screen. If we're idle and the click finishes, I mean, nothing should happen, right? If we're moving, nothing should happen as well. Maybe we want to update some position. Otherwise, eh, don't do anything. It's probably not a good application of this pattern then, but hopefully you can see at least how to apply it. Then we can be in the writing state. So we click. We set the state to be writing and now we're writing. And yeah, and we, when we set the state, the state that we pass is set to the state field on the pen. If we manage to click again while we're clicking, we're just going to draw harder. I don't know if that's even possible. If we on click finish, that means we lift our finger up off, on, off the mouse. We set the state to be idle again and we are in the same position as we've been here. And again, if we move we want to move our cursor. However, at this point when we're moving, we're actually painting on the canvas. That's pretty much all there is to the state pattern. Hopefully you get an idea of how it works. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Check out the description and have a good day.